All right, Saints of God. I want you to forget about all your troubles and your trials. If anybody needs a reason to sing, oh, we do. Oh, we do. Oh, if anybody has a reason to sing, oh, we do. Oh, we do. Oh, let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Oh, if anybody has a reason to sing, oh, we do. Yes, we do. Oh, Lord, if anybody has a reason to sing, oh, we do. Yes, we do. Oh, let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. We got a message anybody has. Oh, a message to bring. Oh, we do. Yeah, we do. Don't you know if anybody has a message to bring? Oh, we do. Yes, we do. Oh, let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. For oh, a reason anybody has, a reason to shout. Oh, we do. Yes, we do. Anybody has, oh, a reason to shout. Oh, we do. Yes, we do. Oh, let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. If anybody has a reason to sing, oh, we do. Yes, we do. Oh, Lord, if anybody has a reason to sing, oh, we do. Praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. If anybody has a reason to sing, oh, we do. Yes, we do. Don't you know if anybody has a reason to sing, oh, we do. Oh, we do. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Oh, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Said he died, he died, he died to save. 
I've got a little rise. Want to live God's song. You need a little rise. And let the joy of the King let it rise among us. And let it rise. We got a little rise. Let them rise among us and let it rise. We've got to let it rise. Singing a oh, 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 singing a oh, 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 singing a oh, 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 It's all about the devil. 
<laughs> and it's about the conflict that exists between the spiritual forces of good and the supernatural forces of evil. And you have the spiritual supernatural forces of good. They are a reality. But you also have the spiritual supernatural forces of evil. And we must remember that they too are a reality. Now, I mentioned this last Lord's Day, and I'll mention it again, that one of the problems that I have with, uh, with series is that uh, I know that I feel sometimes a lot of frustration because, as I said, I cannot go back and recapitulate everything that has already been addressed. And that's, it's frustrating for me because I want everybody to have a rich understanding and it's frustrating for you because you're gonna to have to pick up where we are right now. I don't have the time to go backwards and deal with what we've already dealt with. But uh, we're gonna move forward today. Uh, previously, we discussed Satan's weapons. We talked about before the homecoming in December, we talked about Satan's arsenal that Satan has an arsenal, and he has strategies, strategies that he'll employ in order to divert us from our spiritual missions. And, and the primary strategies that Satan uses in our lives is temptation and accusation. He will cause you either to be seduced by something and you are counting on God's forgiveness or you have a sense of unworthiness and you are, he'll have you accusing yourself and, and looking at where you are failing, uh, not fully appreciating the, the grace of God. And so we, we have to recognize both God's wrath and God's grace. They both work hand in hand. They work together. But uh, we've looked at those things that Satan uses, and, uh, and, to, and we want to move forward today talking about our strategies. What do we have as children of God? What do we have to work with? Now, I, I told you there were four things we wanted to deal with, and we've already dealt with uh, two and a half of them. I told you that we want to cover number one. When we talk about this armor that we have to have, to, to defend ourselves and understanding what armor is. Armor is designed to defend ourselves against the supernatural forces of evil that we confront in our lives. And when we talk about this, the question first becomes, well, when do you put it on? Uh, the second thing I told you I want to talk about is, what is it, this actual armor that we have? What is this armor? Third, I said, well, how do we put it on? And then finally, I told you, I want to talk to you about who you need to remember when you do put on your armor. Now, we talked about it on last week, and we started with verse number 14, when we talked about, well, when do you put the armor on? In verse number 14, the first two words that you have in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 14, the first two words say what? Stand firm. Stand firm. Stand firm. So if Paul is telling them, you stand firm, the first thing we understand is that apparently the, the, the battle is already going on. So Paul is letting us know you put your armor on before the battle starts. You don't wait for the battle. We talked about the arrows, and when Paul wrote this, he wrote this conceptually thinking about the old warfare. And, and I told you I enjoy watching those, I like watching those old movies where you have the, 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 the centurions or you have the Romans or you have the Vikings and they have warfare going on. And, 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 and when the army is approaching them, the first thing they'll do is release the arrows. Right. And then when the arrows are coming, they're flying in the air. And a lot of times, that's what Satan does. God is telling you, if you're going to be able to defend yourself against the arrows, we wait around and, and the next thing you know, we in the army are about to end the war. Yeah, yeah. But we don't have our shields on. We don't have our armor on. And the arrows are coming. And I told you, the arrows have flames on them. And we're ill-equipped. What you need to do is put your armor on before the war starts. I told you that a lot of us, and I want to go back and repeat this part. A lot of us, what we want to do is we don't 
worry about things. When things are going pretty good in our lives, we just, we, we remember I told you last week, when, when things are going pretty good in our lives, we don't see deep spiritual change. Mm -hmm. When things are going pretty good in your life, you aren't just running into worship service. You aren't showing up for Bible class. You aren't at home going through God's word. You, when things are going pretty good in your life, spiritually, you just kind of coast. Yeah. Just kind of coast. And it's not until you find yourself with the arrows flying. And the, before the arrows come, I told you, the only thing you want, we, we come in here, we just want, I just want some inspiration. Hmm. Brother Lee, I just, I just need a little guidance. We aren't digging and, 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 and trying to have spiritual depth. In our understanding, it's not until the arrows are flying, the flames are on them, now all of a sudden, we want to get ready for warfare. Yeah, yeah. Right. But Paul is telling us, you don't wait till the arrows start flying. Mm -hmm. You need to have your arm on it. And he says that you've got to stand firm. Mm -hmm. Develop your product right now. Remember I told you last week, Every day of your life, you're going through little skirmishes. And I told you, and I'm kind of going all into them. I told you, patience. That's one of the main struggles folk have. Patience. We get so impatient. We, we, get, impa we get impatient with each other. Impatience and worry. Those are little skirmishes that we have on a daily basis. And when we don't equip ourselves for those skirmishes, when we don't stand up to those skirmishes, we lose those little battles. And what we're doing is ultimately we're losing the battle altogether. Those are little skirmishes to get you ready for the big battle. So we need to have our armor on and we need to be getting ready. Secondly, I told you that what we've got to do is you've got to put the armor on but you got to know what it is. And I shared with you last week if you look in Ephesians 6, all of the things that are talked about here are qualities, every one of the pieces of armor, when you look at what they are, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel of peace, you, you already have all, you got salvation, you got these things. We tend to think of them as something that's out there I've got to run again. No, when you became a child of God, you received salvation. You received the righteousness of Christ. You received the peace and the joy that comes from the gospel. That stuff you already got. What you've got to do now is learn how to take what God gave you when you became a child of God and appropriate it. Appropriated as a helmet, appropriated as a shield, appropriated as a breastplate. God gave you everything you need when you became a child of God. Take it and use it. That's right. All right. You need to utilize it. Use that helmet. Use all that armor. Well, how do you put it on, Brother Lee? And I told you that there are seven items. The belt of truth. The breastplate of righteousness. Right about now I'm catching up where I left off on last week. The shoes of the gospel of peace. The shield of faith. The sword of the word. The helmet of salvation. And he says, finally, and pray. In the spirit. Now I told you there were three categories. If you take all those things and put them in three categories, that this the metaphor of the armor will make sense for you. Last week we talked about the, the belt of truth. And I explained to you that the belt of truth is, is, is embracing the principles and, and it's the it's the, the sheath, the shield, it, it's the undergarment, it's the, the leather garment that protects you, and everything else is put on top of it. So you have that principle of truth. Then you take the others. These are applications that you utilize, but, but you have that belt of truth. You embrace the principle of who you are. And I told you by embracing them, that means that I, I drill these principles into who I am. What, 
we want to do is give intellectual assent to something. I told you if you took a test, you passed the test. Who's Jesus? Yeah, son of God. You know the right answers for everything. But the problem is when the arrows start flying, they're not intrinsically a part of who you are to where you reflexively respond out of who you are spiritually. God is saying through Paul, take these things, drill these principles into who you are. So that when life happens, you just reflexively, intrinsically. You've heard me say the old story the old preachers used to say, when you knock a bucket over, whatever it is, whatever's in it is going to come out. You be around some Christians and all of a sudden somebody step on their foot and they start cussing. I said, oh, I'm sorry. No, don't apologize for who you are. That's who you are. What Paul is telling us to do is take this and drill these principles into who we are. Drill them into your mind. So that when things happen in life, reflexively, reactively, intrinsically, you respond out of who you are spiritually. So we looked at the first two, the first category. And we talked about how that you have to utilize it. Remember when Jesus was in the boat and he was sleeping? Mm -hmm. He asked the question, what was the question? When everybody was so scared, so afraid, Jesus, you won't let us die. Yeah. And Jesus got up and he calmed and rebuked the storm. And then he looked at his disciples and what was the question he asked them? Where is your faith? He didn't say you need to get faith. He didn't say you need more faith. Where is your, you got faith. Where is it? Why are you not appropriating it and utilizing it? That's what he's saying to all of us this morning, Barry and West. When we're dealing with the things in life, why are we, we have, we, 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 by being in, in the body of Christ, we're sons of God, we're the children of God, and by being sons of God, children of God, there are so many things we have. That's right. Privileges we have. That's what Paul is talking about. He's talking about positions and privileges that we have in Christ. That we're failing to appropriate to deal with the issues that come in life. He talks about category two. He says you got a breastplate of righteousness and you have shoes of the gospel of peace. Now the breastplate and the shoes, they're important. They're important for routine operations. The Shoes come from a, a Greek word, hupo, deo. And what it means is it's talking specifically about foot gear. He's saying, in essence, you, you, you're going to be on the battlefield. Yeah. And that's the metaphor he's trying to get you to understand. You're going to be on the battlefield. And, and then if, you, if you're in life and you are a child of God, you're going to find yourself on the battlefield. And the battlefield is going to be right here. You're going to be on the battlefield. And he's saying you have to make sure you can move and maneuver. You got to have good foot gear. Because you have to move and maneuver. You can't predict what the terrain is going to be. Sometimes you might be going up a hill. Other times you might be going across sand. Sometimes it might be rocky. But you got to have good foot gear. You don't, know, you don't know what the terrain is going to look like. Right. So you have to have that foot gear. Then he says, and embrace the breastplate. Comes from the Greek word thorax. It's a plate that protects the breast. Because, you see, 
when the arrows are flying at you. You can take an arrow here. You, you can take an arrow here. All right. All right. But you can't take an arrow here. So those two things work together and for routine operations. But the others, the helmet and the shield, when the arrows are coming, you want to be able to extinguish or quench the arrows of the evil one. Here's what I think this means. Right. When you're just walking around mm -hmm. during the day, mm -hmm. you have to pay attention to what your heart says. Mm -hmm. right. Because that's the battlefield of satanic lies. Basically, that is the reason this is called the armor of God. Let that penetrate. It's the armor of God. It's because it's, it's not the same thing as willpower. We, 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 we think that our armor is synonymous with willpower. You may know that I don't want to do these things because if I do these things, bad things will happen to me. And there's a way for a good person through willpower through gritting your teeth. Now I'm talking about, some of you know what I'm talking about. You're going through life, you're trying to do the right thing. You're trying to live right, and, and, you, and you're relying on willpower. You're relying on gritting your teeth. That I don't see in them. That's not what this is. Are you hearing me? In Ephesians 6, that's not what this is. That's mechanical. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. When you're talking about the will, willpower, I'm gritting my teeth, I'm going to do it, I'm not going to say it. That's not dealing with the whole person, though. If you want to deal with the whole person, here is how you really are. The thoughts of your heart lead to the feelings of your heart, which lead to the actions of your will. Did you hear what I say? The thoughts of my heart are going to lead to the feelings of my heart which are going to lead to the actions of my will. Therefore, if you want to get control of your actions, if you want to get control of your feelings, you better get control. All right, all right. You better get a handle on your thoughts. And the thing of your heart is, the things of your heart, that's where Satan is always trying to get it out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's where he's always trying to get some false beliefs in. And instead of saying, I'm going to grit my teeth. I, I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Well, why do you want to do it? Why are you tempted? What are your problems? Why are you so angry? Why are you despairing? Why are you so depressed? Why are you seduced? Find out what your heart is saying. So if your heart is saying, 
Oh, I can do it. I can do it. I know I can do it. I know it's wrong, but I can do it because God will forgive me. Now, come on. Who had not said that? I can do it. I can do it. But God will forgive me. You need to say, well, what about Hebrews chapter 3 and 13? Where the Bible says, lest any be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. You can be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. You see what it says? But encourage one another daily as long as it is called today so that none of you may be hardened, hardened by, sin's by sin's deceitfulness. You need to tell yourself, no, I got to be careful because I, I don't want to be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. You say, well, I'll just go ahead and do it and I'll repent because God will forgive me. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question. Right. And I want you to really listen to me. All right. How do you know you're going to want to repent? Mm. <laughs> 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 On this side of on this side of the sin, you said, I'm just going to go ahead and do it because I'm on the other side. God will forgive me. Yeah. I'll just repent. Yeah. How do you know you're going to want to repent? Yeah. Oh, y'all acting like you don't hear me this morning. Huh? <laughs> sin is a suicidal action of the will against itself. Every time you do something wrong, it makes it that much harder for you to resist doing something wrong again. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It makes it harder for you to not want to do it. Boy, I thought everybody would be saying amen. Everybody, amen. Everybody afraid if I say amen, it'd be a confession. But we already know. We already know you're human. You're part of this journey. Everybody has struggles. Everybody negotiates struggles. And so you find yourself sinning and then finding it more difficult to not sin. You're arguing with yourself. Walking around talking to yourself. You do it with Psalms 103 and 3 says, it says, praise the Lord my soul and forget not all of his benefits. You know what the problem that most of us have is Put, in fact, go ahead. Put Psalms 103 and 3 up. Who forgives us all our sins. Who forgives us all our sins. And heals all our diseases. Heals us all our diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit. Who redeems your life from the pit. And crowns you with love and compassion. And crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with good things. Who satisfies your heart desires with good things. So that your youth is renewed. So that your youth is renewed. Like the eagles. Like eagles. The verse Lord. 2. Go to verse 2. Praise the Lord. Now he goes through all of these things that God does. He says, praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. And forget, forget not. And forget not. Oh, all Lord. of his blessings and all of his benefits. The problem that we have, you have forgotten all his benefits. You've forgotten all his benefits. You're forgetting it. Remember soul, his benefits. That's what you need to be saying to yourself. Remember soul, his benefits. The benefits. That's what I have to do. You have to do that sort of warfare. But many of us drift. Many of us just coast. Amen. I'm talking about the level of involvement, investment, and commitment that you have on your spiritual journey. Many of us just kind of coast along. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. All right. I don't want to offend anybody, but you know, when I thought about a man just kind of drifting along, I think about a man with a stick with a bag tied on the end. Mm -hmm. Back when I was a kid, they were called hobos. Some of us have allowed ourselves to just be spiritual hobos. Just kind of coasting along, drifting along. You're forgetting all of his benefits. There are benefits that we have being in Christ. 
The breastplate of righteousness reminds you, listen to this, listen. The breastplate of righteousness reminds you of who you are in Christ. We are righteous only because we have been given and attributed to us the righteousness of Christ. So my, right, my breastplate of righteousness is a righteous status that God has given me because of what Christ has done for me. Forget not my benefits. The gospel of peace, that reminds me of the joy that I have now that I'm in Christ. I'm in the body of Christ. I'm a son of God. I can call him Abba Father. He recognizes not my righteousness, but the righteousness Christ has wrapped me with. And because of that, I have salvation. Not that I've earned, but salvation attributed to me because of a sacrifice Christ made. I have joy because of the gospel. Through the gospel, Christ rescued me. The helmet of salvation. I have assurance. I have assurance. I'm not wondering if I'm going to get to heaven. Oh, somebody ought to say amen. I'm not wondering if I'm going to get to heaven. My faith is in Christ. My trust is in Christ. I've given my life to Christ. Christ covers me and he promises me an inheritance that's waiting for me. I have assurance. These are all different ways of looking at what I have in the gospel. We fail to look at the benefits. <laughs> See, you're not looking at the whole self. If you're looking at your spiritual benefits, you're not having to try to grit your teeth. <laughs> Quote one scripture. Touch not, taste not, handle not. That's category number two. <laughs> it's a, category number three. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. And pray in the spirit. Now, these are, these are a different category from those others. The sword of the Spirit and pray in the Spirit. The belt of truth <clears throat> is foundational. Somebody might say, isn't the belt of truth and the sword of the Spirit? Ain't they the same thing? No. <laughs> the belt of truth is foundational. It's learning to put the Word of God in your heart. Is the belt of truth is me learning how to take God's word and drill it into my heart to create a whole new instinct. I want a new instinct. I want to instinctively and reflexively respond to life in a way that shows God's principle have been drilled Amen. into my heart. Yes. Yes. That's foundational. See, the other items of armor are pri the particular privileges, aspects of the gospel that you're supposed to be reminding yourself of. We get into the body first, we get into the church, and then we forget everything. We just, I'm here. That's not a Christian. That's not a child of God. First of all, you've got to appreciate what happened to you in the transition from coming from the world into Christ. you got to give. God gave you something. And when he gave you something, emerging, being born again as a child of God, you've been reconfigured. But we don't take the time to pay attention to the benefits, privileges, and blessings, and, 
aspects of the gospel Amen. that we've received. That's right. That's right. We should be relishing, yes. Yes. drilling in, yes. just walking along thinking about Amen. using all of these things in my heart to deal with the lies of Satan. Well, how do you do that practically, Brother Lee? Well, you take the sword of the Spirit. And like I said, you might think, well, that's repetition. That's the same thing as the belt of truth. No. The belt of truth is the basic principles. The sword of the Spirit is the Bible itself. All right. All right. And then he says, and pray mm. in the Spirit. That's right. I want you to look at this combination. Practically, how do I make this work? How do I learn to relish in what it is I've received now that I'm in Christ? How do I learn to pay attention to the aspects and privileges and benefits that I've received from the gospel? How do I learn to take all of those qualities, features, characteristics, and benefits I have and learn how to appropriate them to become my shield? Bible and prayer. Bible and pray. But somebody say amen. Bible and prayer. Bible and prayer. Bible and prayer. That's as, that's as basic as you can get. You get. The reason you are going, you're not spending enough time in Bible and you're not talking to God. How, you, how well are you doing here? Now, I want you to think about yourself. Don't, don't, just think about you on an individual level. Bible prayer, Bible prayer, Bible prayer, Bible prayer. On an individual level, how well are you doing? All right. Do you know how to read the Word? Do you spend any time with the Word? Are you memorizing God's Word? Are you meditating on God's Word in your individual life? Are you praying, talking to God? What kind of prayer life do you have? Bible and prayer. All right. On an individual level. Well, on a social level. Who do you have as friends? All right. All right. Who are holding you accountable to the kind of life you ought to be living as a child of God. Who are the friends you have that will pull God's word out yeah. and hold your life accountable to matching and falling in alignment with God's word? What kind of friends do you Most of us have friends that say, man, I wouldn't put up with that. She said, what? That's right. Man, she got to go. She got to go. She won't cook. What kind of friends do you have? Girl. That's foolish. That's foolish. He's a fool. You got a fool. What kind of friends do you have? Do you have friends that spiritually hold you accountable to living the life that you ought to be living? Bible and prayer on an individual level. Bible and prayer on a social level. How many friends do you have that say, let's just get together and pray? All right. Bible and prayer on the church level. Bible and prayer. You can't do it out the church. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you think. You can't do it out the church. You have Bible and prayer at the church level. You have preaching of the word. It's not the only way that you need the word, the Bible, but it's one of the ways that we have. 
You have communion mm -hmm. where you reflect on the sacrifice that was made. We need to be more spiritual when we take our communion. We're not just eating a cracker and drinking some juice and getting mad because of the quantity. That's, that, that's, that just made me mad. Are you following me here? You are reflecting on how you received your righteousness. You are reflecting on how you received your salvation. And it did not come at a light cost. And that ought to move you. Who would you die for? The Bible says some of us peradventure may die. Come on. For a good man. Yeah. But who among you would die for sinful man? That moves me that I know had it not been for the death of Christ, I could not have been rescued. That's right. And I talked to you about that. The Bible says in Galatians and in Romans, how that we are rescued by the gospel. And the only time you have to be rescued is when you can't save yourself. Contribution is a form of praise and an expression of thanksgiving towards the object of our faith. And I'm, I think I'm going to come back and spend some time on giving. Can I talk about giving maybe in a week or two or three weeks, four weeks, somewhere? Yeah, can I talk about that? I, I won't call it giving. Can I talk about generosity? <laughs> is that better? I, I'm going to talk about generosity in a few weeks, but because anytime you have to ask the question, people say, tithe and offer, I, how much I got to give? Your spirit's wrong in the first place. Because it's about, it's about you. Your giving is all about you. What you're saying is, how much do I have to give so I can be right? Wow, all right. So it's not about the gift. Yeah. It's about the status. I'm seeking to acquire. But that's not how we give. We just want to, it's generosity. We'll talk about that. What do we have? Bible and prayer on the individual level. Bible and prayer on the group level. Bible and prayer on the church level. That's how we put the armor on Pearland West. That's how we get ready for the battles. What is putting on the armor? It is sent, it's creating. Listen, are you listening? If you're listening, say, I'm listening. I'm listening. I need you to get this. If you're listening, say, I'm listening. I'm listening. Putting on the armor is creating a new disposition by taking the truth, working it into your hearts, working with it, drilling it in into your life, until you get to the point you create new reflexes and you create new instincts. All right. All right. I thought I would have more amens on that. I did. I thought I'd have more amens on that. Because that is a I'm going to stop right there because I'm going to spend some time lastly on who do you remember when you put your armor on. All right. Once I get my armor on, I got to keep my mind focused in one place. So who do I remember when I put my armor on? And we'll talk about that and wrap this up on next Lord's Day. Let me get our leaders to come forward. All of our leaders. And these men are coming forward not so they can be seen of you. They're coming forward to be prepared to service you. They want to serve you. If you have need of prayer, they want to serve you. 
they might sit down with you and have a word of prayer with you even before we have the main prayer up here. These men are here to serve you. If you have something on your heart and you're looking for direction, they'll sit down with you and they'll give you some guidance and maybe take you in the direction that you need to go. These men are here to serve you. We want you to utilize the services that God has in place for you for getting not the benefits. Are you hearing me, Carol Ellis? Yeah. You have benefits being in Christ. And one of those benefits is you have men of God who are in place to serve you. The only thing preventing you from accessing the service that's available for you is your pride. Right, I don't want to come down. Somebody know I got problems. We already know you got problems. Everybody got problems. There's not a person in here who don't have no problems. Well, it's not, if I walk down, the people might think I sinned. We already know that. <laughs> Everybody got some sin. All, we. The battlefield that we have is the evil that's in us. We already know you got evil in you. So the only thing preventing you from accessing the privileges and services available for you is you. We're going to sing a song of encouragement. If you're not a member of the Church of Christ, you can be. The body of Christ, the, the, the spiritual body that Christ put in place to be in relationship with him. That's when we talk about the church of Christ, the body of Christ. We're not talking about earthly organizations. We're talking about a spiritual reality, a spiritual entity that sits between heaven and earth. Embracing Christ as our Savior, believing he's the Son of God, being willing to turn from a life of sin, repent and acknowledge that Christ is the Son of God and be baptized where I'm united with the Spirit and I'm born again in Christ and I become a part of that reality. Do you want to be a part of that reality? You can be by coming down and giving your life to Christ. Maybe you are a part of that reality, but you haven't been wearing your armor. Maybe you are, what is it called when a soldier go running off? <laughs> you might have your armor, but you might be AWOL with your armor. Well, you can come on back and get in the battle. Come on back and get in the fight. All right. Maybe you just need prayer. Failing as God is with us and he's given us so many benefits. Let's not forget our benefits. I know it's warm in here. The new air conditioning unit will be put in tomorrow. Everybody say amen. amen. Forget not his benefits. <laughs> We're going to sing the song of encouragement. If you need to come, do it right now. I surrender all to you Everything I give, I give to you With holding nothing With holding nothing I surrender, I surrender Saints of God. Won't you forget about all your troubles and your trials. 